What's up guys, Nightingale here, and welcome to the Ultimate Beginner's Handbook. Today, we're going to be covering re-rolling inside of Epic 7. Now, something I want to point out just for the next video or two is that you will want to pay attention to the course overview. This will let you know where you are inside of this course system. I am designing this to be watched from front to back so that you, the new player, will not miss anything along the way. So that your experience will be the best and absolute most efficient possible it can be to where we will go and show you and uncover things that no other guides out there really do. So this will be available in the first minute of the video so that you can see where we are. The orange text will let you know that this is the current video. I also recommend that you at least watch the overview video if this is your first time jumping into a video. Um, I recommend this just because you're going to see kind of what we're doing and what the mission is and why we are redoing the Ultimate Beginner's Handbook. So next up, what I want to cover real quick is just give you a brief overview of what the video is. You will always see these as well inside of the inside of the Ultimate Beginner's Handbook, as well as there will always be timestamps below in the description that will take you to where the main key points are. So you'll see the why to re-roll, the re-roll section. I may even end up doing the subsections just so that you can see each part. So you'll be able to jump around in the videos and be able to navigate a little bit easier. So if there's something specific you wanna go back and rewatch, you don't have to watch the full video. You can just click on this and it'll go right to that. So. I want to spend a minute and just kind of talk to you real quick about why you're re-rolling, especially this is for new players and maybe first time mobile phone players or for first time gotcha players. Um, why are we talking about re-rolling? Now for veterans, you already understand when any new game comes out, that's the first thing we think about. We don't even think about the game, the story, the mechanics or anything like that. We're like, re-roll, let's go straight to it. You guys can probably skip ahead. But for new players, what I want to do is just quickly give you a brief overview of why you're here to re-roll and why this is important. Well, Epic 7 has a bunch of characters that you're going to have access to once you get inside the game. You'll be given units for free, depending on where you are, there's events that you can re-roll, that you can use these tickets to get five-star heroes. They have a whole bunch of stuff waiting for you inside of Epic 7. Well, you're here because you're curious about maybe min-maxing a little bit. All right, well, is there a better unit to start with? That's what it's ultimately about. What we're gonna do with our version of the Selective Summit is try to give you guys the best possible start for the future. They, with the recent Awaken update, a lot has changed inside of how we initially teach the Selective Summit. While the process itself is not gonna change, the units itself has changed, and now there's a little more, you could say, variety available, but there's still a couple clear choices that you're probably gonna to wanna to take along the way. And we're gonna show you about who those units are and why when we get to the when we get to those specific categories. But as far as why to re-roll, you're basically here to get a good head start. A unit that's gonna help you progress through the early game. Now there's a lot of stuff that they're gonna be giving at you for free and a lot of things that you're gonna be able to attain relatively early on that will help make your progress easier. So this isn't a make or break for your account, but it will definitely speed up depending on where you go and who you choose in the next couple of stages of your progress. So with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut the video here and I'm gonna bring up the uh, tutorial version of Bluestacks because I'm gonna, I wanna walk you guys as if I, because just I use Bluestacks personally, LD player's good, Nox can be good. Um, just for me with what I've played and with my history of playing mobile games, Bluestacks is the most stable for me. There's also a, there's also a link in all of my Epic 7 videos for Bluestacks, so do check that out if you want to play on an emulator. Eventually, for PC players, you will have a PC client, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the video now. Supposedly in the third quarter of uh, 2022, it's May the 4th right now, may the 4th be with you, um, we will be getting a PC client or for the Macintosh users, you will also have a client as well that'll allow you to play not using emulator on your computer, which is gonna be fantastic. So eventually you won't need an emulator to play on your PC, but for right now you do. 
but in my case with the amount of accounts I have I still will need emulators but my main account will definitely go over to the PC client so let's just go ahead and bake that little bit of information in for the future because it is coming this year so let's go ahead and have this in there so yeah let's jump over to BlueStacks and I'm going to show you a couple things that you're going to need to have if you're re-rolling on an emulator so we have BlueStacks pulled up here and I've got it named it's already set up for a much larger scale of what you're going to see here in just a second but this is what you're going to need to do as something I've learned along the way so the, when you first launch your blue stacks and you've got everything set up, uh, also if you're having trouble, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this tip in here. If you don't have your virtual virtualization turned on in your system BIOS, emulating can always be a royal pain and it'll act real sluggish. So if you don't have virtualization turned on, make sure you go and turn that on. That's just a tip I see a lot of people uh, question when they're using uh, emulators of why it's running so sluggish. That's typically where it is uh, hung up at. So what we want to do is I've already gone through and started up with my um, logged in with my uh, Google Play account here that I use for all my main games. Um, but the first thing you want to do is come here and type in uh, play and then go to the Play Store. And the reason being is because this app right up here needs to be updated or else Epic 7 won't launch on your emulator. So make sure you update your Google Play games. So click that. And then just as simple as um, go through and type in Epic 7 right here. And depending on if there's an event or something going on, hit install and there you go. Now in a few short seconds, this will be downloaded and it's just a very small download to get the actual app on your game, but I promise you that is not the actual game that you are going to be downloading. There is a little bit more to this. So, what we've got is I've already got three more emulators technically running, but we're going to show you this with just the one real quick, and then we're going to catch up when this is done. We'll have all four gone and set up, and I'll talk about it just real quick there. So, Launch the game for the first time on an emulator. This will be slow depending on your system. This does take a minute to boot up for the very first time. The sound is off, so you guys won't hear any sound right away, but there will be sound for you guys on your emulator. Um, like I said, this first initial boot does take a minute and this is just how it goes. Everything's caching in for the first time and there you go. We are in. Really, really simple. To do so it's going to download the initial base patch just it's a very short thing it stops at six percent so don't think of anything about it and we're going to talk about something here especially if you're going to be doing multi instances of blue stacks you will want to do this depending on how well your computer is either one at a time or multiple at a time i can do all four at once but for the case of the video i did three just so i could show you guys the one and not take a long time for this to download now for re-rolling you're going to want to start your um Start with a guest account, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna back out right here for just a second. I'm gonna get all four of these brought up and I will explain to you about the reroll process. We now have these set up and we have four instances of BlueStacks running. These are all different and you can tell by their names of which ones are which. Now for the sake of the video, the only one that's gonna be actually playing sound is our main one, which is right here on the uh, number three will be our main game. All the others, their sounds have been turned off and we're gonna basically quickly just show you how to sync up. There is a little uh, icon right here. You can also hit control shift nine, which will bring this up on um, PC. And then you want to make sure that all three of these instances are now synced. You'll notice that they all have syncing icons and then you just jump in and simple as fire away. So this will take just a second as they boot up now. When you're doing as much as this is, occasionally you will have crashes. It is a part of the process, but you can see here that things are um, booting up and booting in. Now, notice that there are three of them that uh, do not have the guest login. And that is solely due to the fact that this has not caught up to it. I just wanted to bring them up so that you can see where we are. I'm going to unsync this for just a moment and we're gonna start this process which these have already done.
And when we talk about why Epic Seven is so cool, please note that this is actual animation from inside the game. This is what their quality of their cutscenes are. This is a promotional video that they use. They literally mean play the anime. I cannot stress how awesome this is from a game standpoint. Their skill animations are not quite they can be quite amazing, but they're not gonna be quite as good as the promotional video stuff, but I promise you when you get in, there's gonna be a lot of great stuff. All right, so for the reroll, you wanna make sure that you click guest account, and it's going to give you this uh, warning that yes, you could potentially use your stuff because it's not linked up. Do not link your accounts when you're initially starting your reroll. That can be done later. Now, right here, you will see that it's basically, you have to agree to the terms and conditions or you do not get to play the game. But make sure you are 13 years or older. If not, you have a guardian present or whatever the term to service says. All right. Next up is picking your server. Now, because of where I am, I do not have access to the um, or to the Japanese server. So depending on where you are, um, you will you may or may not be able to select the Japanese server. But I want to give you a quick lowdown just so that you may or may not be disappointed when you get there. As far as total popularity, Global is probably the most popular server. Europe is probably the most dead server next to, if not more dead than Asia. Asia may have actually more players on it. Korea is actually very, very, got a pretty good population there. And the Japanese server is relatively new and they have a pretty good popping population there as well. But obviously play with where your friends are at. That's the most important thing because if you want to join guilds, it's going to depend with where your friends are at. All my main guilds are on Global. I do have one for um, Europe, but I do not have one in Korea, Asia, or Japan. So, but for the sake of the tutorial, because again, I'm on a Global thing, I'm gonna play Global. As far as the other thing to say here that a lot of people don't talk about is there is no technical difference other than the guilds you will be able to join. When it comes down to PVP, and when it comes down to PVP, you'll be able to do that uh, with any of your friends, no matter where they are in the servers due to mock battles. But when it comes, and RTA, uh, but when it comes to Arena, that is server-based, Guild Wars is server-based, and your friends are server-based. So do keep that in mind. So we're going to be going global, which is where the others are set up at. And the next thing we're going to start is the download. Now, depending on how crazy your computer is or com on what your phone is, you will definitely want to download the high quality pack. That was a absolute massive upgrade and watching the difference between their animations cleaned up so much better with the high quality pack. So please, if you can experience it, use the high quality pack. It is so, so awesome. So for the case of the tutorial, all the others are running the high quality pack. We're going to run this one as well. We're going to go ahead and start the download here. And there's a little blue bar going to start going here. Now what we're going to do is so that you guys don't have to wait for this. We're going to cut when this has all synced up and we're all ready to click on this and we'll continue the tutorial from here. For me, about 15 minutes has passed. Uh, this one ended up bugging out. Like I had a feeling it, one of them would. I knew I wouldn't get all four of them cleanly installed. So here we are. We're really to the point now where we're actually going to sync the game. So I'm just going to come up here and hit play. And now I have control over all four instances. And here we go. We're going to now talk to you about the actual, like where to go and how to start up inside of Epic 7. So here we go into the game we go for the first time. Now, I will say this before we go any further, I'm going to be skipping everything. I want you guys to go through, take your time, read the story. This story is really cool. They do a great job talking about in setting up the story. I personally had a blast reading it. I really wish this was an anime. If you want to get down to really down to it, I really wish this was an anime. I think it would turn out so well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be skipping through the tutorial to make sure one, we don't spoil anything for you, two, I'm gonna be skipping as much as possible, and really what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna meet you at the lobby here in just a minute. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit skip, and when I do, we're gonna cut. So we're gonna meet you back at the lobby, which is after the tutorial. So what we're gonna, well, there's, it, there's more tutorial to this, but what I classify as the tutorial is gonna be this section that we're about to enter right here. So I'll see you guys in the lobby.
Okay, we're now in the lobby and I wanted to go ahead and skip through all of the login stuff because not all of it is going to be there for you and I don't want you to feel like you're missing out on something because this check-in or that check-in isn't there. But right now, just understand that currently in the game we have the Awaken Update celebration, so they're doing uh, something specifically for that. We have the Moonlight system revamp, so they've got a system for that. Uh, plus the daily check-in, plus the uh, new player check-in. So there's a lot of stuff popping up for me that I don't necessarily want you to feel like it always has to be here. Well, the next step, what we're going to do is we want to get you from the lobby to now going into Adventure, which I've already skipped the tutorial, so that's not there. The next step inside of the reroll is to go down here to Adventure. And as it loads in, you'll see that we have four stages that you need to complete. You need to complete 1-1 to 1-4 right here. So, whoops, I am I have a habit of going up to that. So let me just do this, unsync these, because I normally use the top one, but for this video, I decided to make the bottom one. So what we're going to do is I'm going to meet you at the uh, end screen of 1-4, and uh, play through this again. Read the story; it's really, really good. There's uh, you're gonna see a lot of cool stuff along the way, and you're gonna learn a couple uh, cool, unique things that are gonna help you out along the way. So I'll see you at the end of 1-4. Here we are. We are at the end of 1-4. We just finished up the tutorial, and now onward we go to the selective summon so let's go ahead and get through this get back to the lobby and then there's a few things we're going to bring up that you probably have been waiting to see so far in the video you probably were like where is it is he going to talk about it what do we need to summon for again you guys need to read this um it is actually helpful and we're going to skip the tutorial and all of that stuff and we're going to go back and um we're going to cut right here i need to get uh, the video set up for what I want to talk about next. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Now that I've got everything set up, let's talk about the most important part about the whole video. Who to summon for? Now you're probably like, why didn't we talk about this earlier? Because it's all about efficiency. We're trying to show you how to reroll. Then now that it's important, we're now here to talk about who to reroll for. So we have so many units available in the game, but we're going to talk about 14 different units. So let me introduce you to the cast of the Epic 7 Selective Summon. So here we go. We're going to read these off from left to right and then top row to bottom row. So we have Armintha, we have Ball and Saison, we have Bassar, Charlotte, and Chloe. The next row we have Destina, Iseria, Ken, Ludwig, and Ravi. Then we have um, Sez, Sigrid, Tywin, and Vildred. These are the 14 units that are available inside of the Selective Summon. Now, there are many more out there, and some of them arguably a lot better than this. But how many of these are viable for us? What are we specifically after? Good question. Well, the answer is not many. And... We'll kind of get into that a little bit more in depth. So for the new player experience, this doesn't mean that every unit here is bad. And a prime example would be Bassar or Charlotte. In this case, we're going to pick on Charlotte for a second. Not only is her forehead the size of Texas, but she's technically a PvP character. All right, so that's what we're actually here for, is Charlotte is technically, by a veteran standpoint, She's a good character. She's a really good knight. But she requires a specific build, specific artifact, and something that you're not really going to have access to early on. Does this necessarily mean that she's bad for you in the early game? No. It's just there are better units to give you a better start in the long run, as you're about to see. So there's another one that we need to point out. Because if you've done any research whatsoever about Epic Seven so far, you may have heard the name Sigrid. And that's right, if you've seen her face before, she's the second uh, from the left on the bottom row. And there's a big red X over her. That's not a mistake. And here's why. With the 428-2022 update, so April 28th, 2022, any guide video you watched prior to this is now out of date. Completely and 100% out of date. So use that as a guide to know where you are at. And also, hello to future people who are watching. This is hopefully still up to date. Now, 
let me say this. For right now, this is going to be the most up-to-date units that you should pull for out of the Selective Summit. And why I say this is because with the recent update coming in on the 428 update, Sigrid is now no longer needed in the Selective Summon. While she's still needed, she's not what you're going to come for out of the Selective Summon. Here's why. Is the event, which is the uh, Expert Hunt, or uh, the Hunt Expert Challenge, is going to allow you to pick up Sigrid and actually all three of these units for free. But you're going to be going after Sigrid first. Which is why she's now been removed from the Selective Summon as who to summon for. So... Is also just to put a clause here because there's going to be people asking about is this event permanent because there are some people who still know about this is yes according to the stove post this is a permanent function in the game now here's the clause from 4-28 so 4-28 2022 dash permanent is how it reads but there's a clause written right underneath it that says made or subject to uh, for removal announced in a separate notice or something along that line Basically, it's legal for them being able to say it is permanent in the game. But for the foreseeable future, they have no plans to remove it whatsoever. But if they ever need to, for whatever reason, they've got the clause to say that they can announce it later that it will be able to be removed, or that it will be removed from the game. But as of now, this is going to be how you're going to get Sigurd from here on out. So, that's why she's marked out. Now, if you have a keen eye while I've been talking, you realize that there's one unit up there that doesn't have an X on it. And you're probably going, you missed one. No. We'll talk about that in a minute. That is not a reason why. Now, technically, she's not something you really should be going after. But we'll explain that in a few minutes. So let's jump in now to who are we after? Well, we've got a couple clear choices. So, first off, our goal in our mission here is going to be Iseria. Iseria is arguably probably one of the best choices out of the Selective Summon for early game players. And there's a lot going on here, so this is why this is important. First off, let's talk about her skill 3. Her skill 3 has the a, ability to dispel buffs, which is going to be huge. She has a defense break there. Then she has a defense break on her skill 1. But now, her skill 2 has a very unique skill to the game. She has the ability to reset skill cooldowns. Now, the phrasing of this can be taken two ways, but this is the better version of it. Instead of where units can extend a cooldown reduction for say like pvp in this case she can shorten the cooldown to a full reset instantly available now why is this important is because if you've also done a little bit of research you may or may not have heard about a unit named tamarin if you haven't get ready to understand this name she is absolutely queen when it comes to the pve aspects of the game she's literally one of the best soul weavers in the game and she's going to be a unit that you're going to be hunting for until you get her because your game will change completely when you do. Now, this isn't about Tamron, but let's explain this really quick. So, Tamron has two skills available to her instantaneously when you start playing with her. But, even with, I believe when she's fully moloed up, or fully leveled up, let's put it this way, her skill 3 still has, I believe it's an 8 turn cooldown. As long as Iseria is faster, as long as Iseria is faster than Tamron, Iseria can reset Tamron and put her into her idle form or allowing her to go into that into her idle form turn one and just completely negate the eight turns that it's going to take you to get it cooled down now while it's not exactly eight turns there's you'll see why eventually when you get in and check out Tamron. so that's why Iseria is going to be one of the number one choices but again it's for the dispelling of the buffs which you're going to need you're going to want her for the defense break which you're going to really want so Iseria is probably ideally the number one choice coming out of this over all of the units for beginning players for the new player experience. Keep this in mind. This isn't a veteran's perspective. This is me giving you advice and saying that for a new player, this is probably going to be arguably now one of the best units you can get out of here. Okay, so you've had earmuffs on and you're more interested in what's in the creative options. Okay, we'll talk about these for just a second. So these are here just in case, for whatever reason, you pull Iseria off of a ticket or in through a daily summon or something along the way that through another way of re-rolling, you are able to obtain Iseria prior to this. Okay. Well, there's a couple options. With the recent buffs to Destina, I mean, very recent, um, she's now kind of jumped up a good bit. She also is one of the few units in the game that offers you an AoE revive, which is really unique. Now, not there aren't 
a ton of them, but there are a few units that do have an AoE revive, but most of them are either a random revive or a single revive or a single full heal revive. She's one of the few that can do the AoE revive and actually a full revive. It's not revolving around a buff because there are units that can do it through a buff. She can do it from as long as she's the last unit, she can bring everybody back. So therefore, Destina is going to come up here. Plus, she was an old, an older favorite for early game back in the original, let's say the first hundred days of the game. She was originally one of the favored units for that. Next up, you've gotten to play with him a little bit as well, which is Vildred. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to put the claws in now. In a few videos, you're going to have a video coming out called the Moonlight Blessing, which is where we're going to get into this a little bit more in depth. But for now. Here's why we're going to suggest, or maybe suggest not to take Vildred. Depending on what you're going to end up taking out of that, will determine if you're going to end up taking Vildred over, say, again, you're assuming we're not, you're assuming you're not getting um, Isaria, or you've already gotten Isaria, so you're looking for another option. Depending on what you're going to take out of that, will determine if you are going to get Vildred or not. While he is arguably one of the best PvE farmers in the game, as well as a very good PvP unit later on. I don't know if this is necessarily what you want to take as a first option. But he's here because he is a very good option, but one of the Moonlight units technically does his job better for the new player experience. Now, next up is Ravi. Ravi's here because she's a little bit different type of, of a unit. She's more of a bruiser-based unit, so she's based around more on the HP-based side of things, which is cool, because certain things, having a tankier unit will help mean you can take in a little more damage and be able to deal a little bit more damage. For the early PvE aspects, Ravi can actually be quite terrifying to depending on where you are and what you're trying to clear. Now, does this mean she can go in and solo everything? No, but back in the day, Ravi could do a lot, and still can do a lot, but... Technically, has fallen off some due to the meta. Now, let's also just say this. Because it's meta doesn't mean it's technically better. It just means it was the easiest way to achieve victory. And in this case, Ravi has fallen off some. But as all things do, they fall off and they come back. So there's always a cycle and it's just eventually Ravi's turn will come back. But for right now, she's not completely useless if you do want to use her in PvP. But there are better options if you don't have any. Or if you have the options, there's better out there. Okay, now you've probably been staring at it going, I cannot wait to hear what he's got to say because he's named this super weird tech. All right, here we go. Now, is this my op is this my opinion to take this unit instantaneously? No, I recommend every unit above this way more than this. But let's just say for whatever reason, you have RNG of RNG. You somehow got Iceria prior to this and you somehow got one of those other ones and you're wanting something a little bit else. Here we go. So this option technically opened up because Sigurd no longer exists in the Selective Summon, theoretically. Because you're no longer after Sigurd from this, now opens Chloe out. Now, why is Chloe important here? Is because Chloe has one of the few debuffs in the game that is completely unresistible, meaning it will always land. That's Magic Nail. Now, let me go ahead and educate you on this real quick. According to Smilegate, or Super Creative, whoever you want to call this, they have come out and stated that they cannot remove this 15% baked-in resist into the game. They balance the whole game around it, and they refuse to change it. Everybody complains about it, you'll eventually see. Trust me. Especially when it comes down to it needs to land or you're going to fail, you'll 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 learn this soon. But this is how, does this ruin the game? No. But here's what's important, is Magic Nail is unresistible. So it will always land. Now, why is this important? Because Sigrid and Chloe go together. Now, does this necessarily mean Chloe is the best unit for Wyvern? No. Does this mean that she's the best unit for support? No. But if we had to take an option out of here to get you started and get you in that direction, Chloe can be used in other content because of the magic nail. So it's an extra uh, debuff that increases damage dealt or received to the target. This will be very helpful for some content. But again, we're saying that Chloe is here just because I want to educate you, not necessarily tell you of what to pull. That's why I'm putting her here so that you at least understand that if all your other options are here, out of everything else that was marked out on that list, she's still at least viable for your new player experience because that magic nail is very, very good for what it does. But as I said, everything above this has more priority over this unit. It just comes down to if you just love her design, sure. And that goes with any unit. 
I'm not going to tell you here. I will say it here. Every unit has its place, but this is not necessarily where you want to go and just completely go off on your own because some units will actually really slow down your progress. In this case, none of these units will slow your progress down, really. It's more of if you don't get one or the other, these are just different ways of helping you out. But the choice, the clear choice here for what we're going to be looking at is going to be Isaria. Now, last thing I want to talk to you about before we jump into the Selective Summon is this. Because we're about to talk about re-rolling, which is what you're here for. Do not re-roll for artifacts. Whatever you do, do not re-roll for artifacts. That's not how you want to do. I don't if you've ever heard that ever heard that before, do not re-roll for artifacts. And then also, so that you don't waste your time trying to go after, because I know some gotcha games will let you re-roll for multiple re-rolls. And I mean, so, or to be able to get multiples in a re-roll. You cannot obtain a five-star hero and a five-star artifact in the same roll, as well as you will not be able to obtain dupes of either. So don't be trying to look for two uh, five-star units in a singular pull. That won't happen. But you will be able to roll for a five star and multiple four stars. But I'm going to tell you now that the odds of you trying to land that aren't really good. But there technically is a theory here. There are good four stars to be looking out for. So there is the ability if you want to go in. Uh, there are certain things that you want to look for. But we'll talk about that as we do the selective summon. So now let me jump back over and bring up the four instances of blue stacks. Because I feel like we've talked about this enough. Let's talk about re-rolling and jump in right now. It's finally time to actually show off the selective summon. So here we go, we're gonna click on summons. Now there is something you have to do first. Now your banners will be different depending on where you are and when you start the game. A couple things I do wanna go ahead and point out is for 10 more hours, Tamron's technically on banner. This is what stinks about making these guides and that unit is up is because now I'm gonna feel bad for everybody saying when is Tamarin's rerun, I have no idea. Um, she's a bait unit, she shows up whenever there's very big important things, but I'm gonna say it's gonna be at least three to six months from now, so it's May, so you do the math, it's gonna be a minute. You're gonna to have to find other ways of getting Tamarin. And also we should go ahead and talk about the custom uh, drop rate up. The, that is not gonna be probably available for a lot of you. That will be probably gone. But here is something that we wanna go ahead and talk about, which is the free summon. This has to be done first, because if you click here, I don't believe it'll let you go in, but we're gonna try it anyway, because I'm pretty sure this doesn't. So we'll do this as a test. Also, I should go ahead and point this out here as well. Here are the rules of the selective summons. Just to go over them, just so we read them together, to say you never heard them or you can't say you never heard them. You are given a total of 30 chances to summon, but you can only choose one of them. Cool. If you are, uh, if you receive the summon results that you like, you can record them or confirm them, then complete, record them and complete the selective summon. So there's an ability to save, which we're gonna show you in a minute. The drop rate for the selective summon is different from other types of summons. You will not see this type of crazy summoning in anything else. So don't expect to see five star after five star after five star. It's specifically made for this. Only one, okay, so they even talk about it in here. Only one five star hero or artifact may appear per summon. This is so that you can't get dupes. I think this is a little weird, but it also prevents trying to super roll really hard. Also, you're going to see a five star guaranteed on the first, 10th, 20th, and 30th summon. So you can't say you didn't see anything at all during your summons. Because back in the day, before that was added in, you literally could see nothing the whole way through and it was quite depressing. And the new heroes will not be included in the selective summon. I think they eventually need to come through and update this maybe in a few years, but to help new players out. Because there are some units that really could help them out that might be arguably better than what we've already mentioned. So uh, just in case, I'm pretty sure we had to click this, but let's go ahead and see. There we go. You may use the Covenant feature through the tutorial. So yeah, you do have to complete this first. So you will need to do the first summon. And I will go ahead and say this. Out of all the times I've re-rolled accounts, I have never seen this summon spark ever. So don't think you're going to be able to roll a four star or a five star out of this. I think this is always a guaranteed three star unit. So for the sake of the video, we're going to be sitting here spam clicking as absolutely spastically as possible, trying to get the tutorial to skip. Uh, and then what we're waiting for now is the skip tutorial to show up on all of these screens. There we go. Skip tutorial, skip tutorial, skip tutorial. I know how this works. So that's also going to be frustrating for you guys. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to skip the 10 summons. We're not going to worry about that. We'll do those maybe as a bonus later on. So onward to the selective summon, which is what you're here for. So the first pull always looks the best, and that's because they all spark. It's all guaranteed. The 10th, 20th are and 30th are always going to be like this so just remember when they come in from the right with the little guy down here 
When he comes in, that means a five-star hero. When the girl comes in from the left, it is a um, five-star artifact. So, but just because it sparks doesn't mean it's a five-star hero. So we got, let's see here, Ken, Chloe, uh, Ken, and Charlotte. Or as I like to call her, five head. So absolutely garbage, onward we go, and we're just gonna click through. And now you're gonna see, because I have to micromanage these differently so that we don't um, accidentally jump too far. Uh, I wanna keep them synced up together. We're, we're having to keep control of these different. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for that one to pop up, skip tutorial, and now uh, basically we're home free to spam as many uh, summons as we want. So let's jump into this and pray we get Iceria. So let's see. We got Basar to show up. All right, so let me just go ahead and, uh, yep, I gotta do these independently. And here we go. So this is the only issue. Okay, so here's the five star artifact version. And we got an artifact, whoop. Well, I got him out of sync. That's fine. We'll do these other three. So I'll go ahead and we'll summon this one. Yes, summon this one, yes, and uh, we'll catch up here, summon this one. Uh, this is because I'm managing four. I could, could, I was able to blast through these a lot faster, but doing four at a time is quite a challenge. Crud, I need to unsync these, is what I need to do. Okay, so we got Sez on this one. That's going to be a garbage roll. And the reason I'm doing four is to have a better chance of getting it. We got an artifact on this one. Uh, as soon as I can get them synced back up, this will be a lot easier to do. This will be a lot easier. Okay, so that's three. So you need to do another summon. Ooh, that's painful. When it doesn't spark like that, it's all three stars. It's That's a super painful pull. No matter what you do, and this is why I don't like doing ten pulls. Okay, now we're able to sync back up. Here we go. And fire off. Two no pulls. All right. So let's just go ahead and clear this one. We got Armin. Here's a cool knight. Uh, I should probably, as we go, here's a good artifact. If you happen to get this along the way, Water's Origin is definitely really helpful. Armin's a cool four star if you get her along the way. Uh, let's sync it back up. Go again. No sparks. All right, we're gonna go ahead and unsync again. Just spam click until one of these go. So we got four star artifacts. So just because you see a four-star artifact or a four-star unit doesn't mean you're necessarily not gonna have a pull. All right, summon number six. Ooh, again, duds. Hey, we got a five-star hero. Come on, Iceria, do it. Nope, Lugwig. Never mind. Uh, he got a buff, uh, but honestly, with what's going on, I, I see nobody using him. All right, let's sync back up, go again. All right, just trying to get through these as fast as possible. We got an artifact on this one, another Etica Scepter. Cool artifact, uh, just not something you want to roll for. Okay, we got two duds, we got a hero. Come on, Iceria, come on, Iceria. Hey, we got an Iceria summon. Okay, perfect. Now it's time to teach you while we're here about how to save a roll. Now do we, oh, we got a four star artifact in here, Moonlight Dreamblade. Okay, so the roll overall isn't that great. So pretty much everything in here isn't gonna be useful to you early on. Now Moonlight Dreamblade is actually pretty good, but we've got a uh, Carrot who, okay, you know what, Never mind. Carrot's actually pretty good for uh, later on in the game, but uh, everything else is kind of a dud. So here's how we record summons. So right here is the button. Let me go ahead and get this uh, synced up. Okay. So to record the summon, you're gonna come over here and click record summon, which will lock this in. So here we go, we've got a nice area account right away. But we need to go even further beyond. So what I can do is to save time on the video, I'm gonna go ahead and summon off the rest of the account and when we're done, I will share with you what I ended up getting along the way. So. I'll see you guys on the other side of the remaining summons. Okay, so I wanted to come back real quick because I have something that I absolutely needed to show before we got to the end. And that's, you need to look at reroll number two, the top right. 
So this is one of the prime examples right here of what we talk about of why to continue going through this. Not only did we get Iceria, we got a four-star hero, Silk, who's, you know, we're not going to say she's great, but then we got a four-star artifact and another four-star artifact. Now, I've already, at this point, pulled Iceria. This is the same one that pulled Iceria earlier. But this is what we want to talk about now is I've gone into further rerolls and now we have to pick between the two. So, hands down, because we have Terranor Guard, which we'll, we could use for some PvE content, we have the Tagahel's Book, which is a good mage artifact, and Sashay is a good um, ranger artifact. This is arguably, hands down, a much better pull overall. So, we want to record this now as our new summon. So, this is how you replace one if you get one better. So, we're going to record this, and it says, Would you like to uh, record the current summon results? The previously recorded results will be overwritten and no longer available. Correct. We want to keep this result. So, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and just finish out the last four rolls just to see what else we get. Um, because maybe we get a better roll. That's why we were doing this, is just to go through and show you guys about how to get better rolls and for the end of this. Now, I've got a little secret of if I'm able to click up here, I'm not going to send it, but I do have to unsync here at this point. Uh, we get another artifact, another Etica Scepter. I have seen that artifact way too much in summoning this. So let's see here. We got three summons left. So we got a guaranteed here in just a minute. Here's another hero. We got a Destina. Nice. Always fun. Strax Gauntlet. All right. And uh, two summons left. Also, let's just go ahead and point out here that the uh, warning is just letting you know that you only have a few summons left. Hopefully, you guys have seen this by now. But basically, it's a warning of, hey, you've only got 10 summons left. Uh, start making up your mind if you've been way too indecisive now because it's about to be over and you're about to have to re-roll your account. So, let's see here. That's a nope. All right, and final summon. So this is the final. This is a guarantee. Every single one of these will pull a five-star. Now, the last chance. You can't say you hadn't seen anything, and we have garbage. All right. So, we have something to show off now. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and now show you the confirm here at the end. So this is why you want to go through all 30. So now it comes down to confirm. Now, I'm going to unsync this for you guys so that you don't have to have a panic attack that I'm going to do something I don't want to do. We ended up pulling three Iceria accounts, but arguably after that uh, after that top one, none of those others are better. Um, we didn't get anything really that amazing on any of them on the bottom two. But definitely this one because it has the four-star unit, it has the double four-star artifacts, this is the one we're going to take. So you have the ability to pick between the two. Uh, so this one's saying, because we didn't save one up here in the number one reroll, you do not have anything, so you have to take this roll. So you can see that here. Uh, there you go. Congratulations. We're going to confirm this one. Take this one. We're going to have this one as a backup, just ever in case. We're going to have this one as a backup, just in case. So there we go. We have completed the selective summon. Now... <clears throat> We got one other step that we want to show you really quick inside of this. So let me make sure that this is all undone. Is now we're going to talk about the tickets, which um, we'll factor in in just a second when we talk about the ultra hardcore reroll. So, what we're going to do is this is because of an event that's going on. We're going to do this again as bonus content because why not? Everybody's sum uh, summoning gambling addicts. So, we're going to summon those in just a second. And we're going to pop these two five star hero uh, tickets. So, let's see what we get. Do we get a dupe of Iceria? Because that would be irony on top of each other. Mm, okay, we get Sermia. So that'll be a dupe on the account if we end up playing that through. Uh, Dilla, uh, Lilibet is cool. Vivian is a dupe for this account. So that's kind of unfortunate. We got two of the free units. But hey. And then let's see here. Please be something good. Oh, wait. I got the artifact on that one. All right, we got... I. <laughs> <laughs> the irony of that account, I spoke it into existence. I cannot make that up. I am glad that this is on video. Literally caught in 4K that I pulled two ice areas back to back. So this is the case where if you pulled the tickets beforehand, 
you wouldn't have picked Isaria here. You would have picked something else. But that's the account that we're going to be going with. So let me go ahead and rearrange this to bring up Reroll 2. Actually, we don't even need to bring up Reroll 2. I can do this from here. Uh, we'll just do this. Actually, no, I do need to bring up Reroll 2. Never mind. I'll be right back. Okay, so now the next step that we need to talk about is, of course, for those of you who fail and don't get what you're wanting, we need to teach you actually how to reroll. This is a rerolling guide after all. And what guide wouldn't be complete if we didn't actually show you how to start and restart the game. So here's how this works. We are going to take the account that we took with um, the Ball and Saison account. Because we didn't get what we wanted. We didn't see anything along the way. Now, arguably that those two units are cool, but they're not worth keeping. Um, so let's go ahead and show off how to restart the account completely so you go here to your little the little blue box up here you click on it you go to the gearbox and then reset server so now from this point on you no longer have to download anything you just it's going to wipe your name from existence in this case it'll wipe the epic 7 name so we're going to click here and then we're going to type in epic 7 hashtag and then you'll type in your version which mine is i y o c v k and there you go confirm reset server are you sure you want to reset yes i am and now your account has been deleted it no longer exists it is gone for good do not ask them to restore it it is gone now you click guest login you click global server or whatever server you are re-rolling on and you should see a screen that looks quite familiar here in just a few seconds And here you are, back at the tutorial. Now, let's go over to one of the um, other accounts real quick. Let me bring up um, here, properties, and bring up uh, reroll 3. So reroll 3 is just the exact opposite of what you want to do, is you want to come here to the gear icon. You will now click account management, and then you'll link to stove. Now, here is where you will have to have some mileage may vary because in this case depending on where you're at and what region will determine what you can link to email id is to link to directly to the stove page so you'll have to have an account created with them uh for me you can do uh you can sign into google or you can sign into google or gmail you can sign into facebook and you can sign into twitter uh my main is synced into my facebook and or a gaming facebook and then i have all my other guild accounts synced in on here and this is how you save the account that you just rolled so that is how you're going to get through that. And now just for the enjoyment of the rest of the video while we wrap up here. So what did our rerolls get us? Our rerolls got us a great laugh is what we got. We got twin Iceria rolls on this account. That is actually painful to think about. We got two Iceria's on the Iceria reroll. But this is what we're after and this is where we're wanting to go. So the next video is going to be what to do after the reroll. So now we've taught you everything we need to know about how to reroll. Next up is what to do after the reroll. So we got one last thing to talk about. One more thing. And for those of you who are probably like, I bet he forgot. I did not. We're saving the best for last. And we're going to cover this really quickly here. And that is the stats because this is something that we're going to talk a little nerdy to you for just a second because i've got something to talk about so before we talk about the ultra hardcore mode we need to talk nerdy to you all right so i did a speed run this morning just to see how fast and how efficient i could do it so here you go is this is a clocked timer off of uh premiere pro so this is down almost down to the second and then that was the total run time from the second the frame kicked in to the second I finished the selective summon. That's how long it took me. It took me a total of 19 minutes and 28 seconds to speed run this on one account. Now, while this has got a lot more information and this took me a lot longer to do, that is as long as it'll actually take you to do if you're doing this on one device. This is why I also did it on four devices because now I've basically done what would have taken me an hour in 20 minutes, roughly. So here's where the breakdown came in. It took me roughly five minutes and 12 seconds to do the download. Your internet connection may vary. So depending on where you're at, that'll determine how long that takes. The tutorial took me a total of two minutes and one seconds. I know I couldn't get it two minutes. Uh, I got hung up on uh, one of the cutscenes. Wouldn't let me through. So then the uh, from 1-1 to 1-4 took me seven minutes and three seconds. 
uh, to run that as efficiently as possible. That's me knowing how to play the game and what skills to use and exactly where to use them and also waiting on the cutscenes. That's as fast as I could absolutely do. And then the selective summon, knowing what I was exactly looking for, I was able to blast through in four minutes and 23 seconds to get through it. So when I told you we were gonna talk about all the numbers and completely expose everything, I literally meant just that. So now for you absolute ultra hardcore people who may be gotcha veterans who've been around for a very long time, we're now gonna ex quickly explain to you how to do ultra hardcore mode. Now, first up, the first method to the UHC reroll is this. So assuming you have tickets, in my case is what I should have technically done, but for the sake of the tutorial, you're not always gonna have a ticket, so that's why I did it last. But now you see why, in hindsight, why you pop your tickets first. So here's how you do this. You play the tutorial, you use your tickets, if you don't get the unit you're after, you reroll. In this case, you would be going after Tamarin is actually what you would be going for. So with those tickets, you're after Tamarin and or some other high value item, depending on what the ticket is. Some of them are even selectors. But in this case, if it's a selector, you keep moving on. So if you didn't get what you're after here, you reroll the account. You go out, you clear the data, uh, clear the cache. No, you actually have to go into and reset your username at that point. Yeah, you know, you have to do how we did it just a minute ago. Then, if you do get what you want, then you go through 1-4, pull on the Covenant banner, uh, or for the event pulls, if there are any. Um, and this is where you'll be looking for ML5 or anything like that, if that is there as well. But then you go into your selective summon, and then you pick between your best roles if you are able to get the unit. Now, this is also where things can weigh out. Uh, I left this in here just because it is kind of the same, but you'll see why in a second. So there's another version out there, which is the daily free 10 pulls, which this is an event that sometimes you start on where it's just the 10 pulls. In that case, for the free, uh, this is typically where you're gonna hunt for ML5s. Don't do this. If you're the average person, do not do this rolling method. It is insanely long, insanely annoying. And I mean, it takes a long time to do this. But you'll play through the tutorial, You'll play um, through 1-1 um, one, one to 1-4, one, then you'll do your 10 pulls, restart the game if you didn't get an ML5. You don't even touch the selective summon. Assume you do, um, you'll go through, and then you'll basically, at this point, you take what you get, so you need to be saving rolls along the way. And this is absolutely, I mean, you save everything that looks good at this point. So if it is a cigarette roll, you take it. If it is a to start off with, then you take uh, the next best option. So if it ends up being Chloe, because you know that she's there, you now take the Chloe roll. And you keep working your way till you keep working your list up to getting a better and better and better unit. So keep that in mind with how this method is working. And then the absolutely insane version of this and i definitely don't recommend this but heck if you want to put the time into it here you go here is the absolute megatron of uhc mode which is the daily free 10 pulls plus five star tickets and selectors depending on where and or selectors depending on where you are at so in this case we're assuming that there are tickets available in this case we're just going to assume that they aren't selectors so you'll play through the tutorial, then you'll roll the tickets as soon as you hit the lobby. If you don't get, um, in this case, if you're after Tamarin, if you don't get Tamarin or some other very high important unit, you probably already know what you're doing with the game if you're doing this at this point, because this is absolutely degenerate of all degenerates. Um, you're going to go after that desired unit and then you're gonna dip. If you get it, you continue on. If not, you're gonna keep this cycle over until you get accounts like this. Then you're gonna play up through the tutorial then you're gonna use your tick, then you're gonna use your 10 summons, praying you see that purple spark of the ML5. Once you get one of those, if that's what you're after, or a high value four, five star RGB unit from the normal confident summons, then you're gonna to go to, and then you're gonna use the same exact mes method to take on the best unit that you get and you keep stair-stepping your way through those 30 summons because chances are, once you hit one and two, you're not re-rolling this account. And you'll probably end up staying on this account for the full duration of whatever the polls are for the seven days, as long as it is active. And you'll be doing the polls to make sure that you don't get anything else once you spark one and two here. So that is UHC in a nutshell. Do I recommend new players doing this? No, do not do this. Stay far, far away from these methods. The ticket one, sure, that's okay. Honestly, we jokingly call this UHC, but this isn't really ultra hardcore, but this is just a step above and all you can tell is click in your mailbox as soon as you start the game. If there's a ticket there, run it. Why not? That's fine. 
because it might change as you see with the account I got two ice areas it might have stopped you from doing that could I have picked up Destino along the way yeah I had a pretty good Destino roll could I got the Chloe roll I got several Chloe's on that account actually you could have picked up almost anything else on that account now and would have given you an extra five star so in this case this ice area has got a friend who's gonna be used for her imprint uh, is most likely what it's gonna be if we six star this unit or play this account out any further than the tutorial itself um, for the beginner's handbook tutorial aspects that is um, so definitely roll your tickets first no matter where you are that goes to any player tickets first always but going any further than that degeneracy or the daily 10 polls doing that that's fine but going into any super severe of trying to chase ml5s don't do that so Thank you guys for watching. I know we've covered a lot of info. It's been a lot of back and forth, but there's a lot to go on here. And like I said, I wanted to give you guys the absolute most technical and accurate and informative advice I possibly could here for the reroll guide. I know you're probably just gonna click on a couple quick scenes to see where the basics are in depth. But if you were able to watch this all the way through from front to back, I really, really do appreciate this. And I do know for the new players that did watch it all the way through, hopefully you've learned a lot along the way. We've got many, many other things coming along. And um, in the next video, we're going to teach you about what to do now that you've gotten out of the Selective Summon. So you guys, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below. I'm happy to help out. Um, obviously, I can't answer questions of when is Tamron going to get rerun. I have no idea. They run a at least two to three times a year. This is the first time this year. We'll use it as that. So this is again, May 4th, 2022. She's been run now once. She can get run probably one more time before the year is over with. So at some point she may have a return. If not, you're gonna have to figure out another way of getting her. It's probably gonna be through a ticket. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.